All right, party people, what's going on? Figured out my audio issue. Um, I had the headset still plugged up from the other video and I didn't realize that. So it was headset sitting over here on the floor and it was plugged up trying to pick me up and all of that. So that's what was going on. So my apologies. But um, as the title says, I agree with Victor Chambers that um, you should not leave your nine to five. I do agree with him on that. Um, because most people have not or are not and will not put together a solid plan in order to transition away from one job to another. Um, so I know some of y'all saw the other video. I took it down. I think it had like a hundred and some views. Um, so I took it down. Um, so if you saw that one, I'm probably not going to say the same exact thing I said in that one and this one. Um, but the main thing is, if you're going to do this business, you got to really be really serious and have your stuff together. Because like I said in the other video, I was up to three o'clock in the morning um, doing some other some personal stuff. Well, because of my accounting, because I didn't spend the time doing my accounting like I had planned to do for like an hour every night. Um, after I'm done, before I go to bed, I want to do a, spend an hour maximum to just go through and make sure everything was straight. All of my, I got all of my checks, um, everything, you know. So since then I even got another check. So I gotta print that check off and everything um, so that I can, you know, deposit that in a, in a little bit before seven o'clock. Um, my bank, which I love is, um, I can deposit stuff by seven and it'll be posted the next day. So anything I post by tonight by seven, um, it'll be there tomorrow morning. So um, my county was all messed up to the point where I had not, I didn't even realize that I didn't receive a check. And it's a couple of checks that I can't, I don't have record that I received them. So I actually, you know, I'm running those down right now. I may have received them and deposit them. So what I'm trying to get from the companies is the actual, you know, when did they get it cleared? So I have a range of idea of when it got cleared. And then I can go back and look through my history through my deposits and find the check. Because every check that I deposit, my bank actually photocopies it. Um, and the bank I'm with is called Atlantic Union Bank. Um, I, they're, they're here in Virginia. I don't know where else they are at, but they're in Virginia. And I haven't had any problems with them whatsoever. So that's printed so you really got to have your stuff together when it comes to the accounting making sure your schedule is straight i'm i'm double checking triple checking now my calendars making sure that what's on my schedule calendar is in my notary assist calendar and again have no issues with notary um notary gadget over notary assist or vice versa doesn't matter to me um there's a few things that i would like to see in those and if i could and if a software came out there that had those items that i want then i would um i would go for it you know i'd probably switch over to that but till then i'm sticking with notary assist um and you stick with what you got so forth and so on but my notary assist calendar if that doesn't match up with my actual schedule kind of stuff that I'm going to be doing, which comes out of my snap doc. So everything that I get from signing order, signature, any, um, who's that, um, app 360, all of those I put in the snap docs and then I just throw it onto my calendar. So, you know, snap docs, you the ability to throw it on your calendar, boom, it's on my calendar. And then if I don't see it in my notary assist on that calendar, then I need to put it on there, okay? So I need to make sure it goes on there. And there was an order from November that I hadn't got a, I hadn't got paid from, so I got that. Um, there was orders that I had from January that I was getting paychecks for, but I did not even have them on my, um, in Snap Docs or in Notary Assist, you know, and they came from signing order and I was like, okay, and I know, I was like, this is jacked up, you know, and then there was some that was in snap docs that was not in notary assist. There was stuff that I had done from bank serve um, and I hadn't put it in anywhere. So 
I'm seeing money coming in, but not knowing what orders these are for. And so I could keep track and say, okay, I got paid. <clears throat> so January actually proved to be much better than I expected. Almost, I made almost $7,000 in January once I got all these other checks coming in that I did not even realize that I had coming in and everything. So the accounting got to be right. So if you're a person who's sloppy, you're lazy, you're a procrastinator, um, you're not organized, all of those things. And all of us have a little bit of that in us at some point in time. But when it comes to this, you can't have that. Because if you're talking about doing this full time and you're doing four to five a day, even three a day, you're talking about 15 a week if you're doing Monday through Friday. And then you're talking about 30, 45, 60 a month and you got checks coming in, that is a lot. You got checks coming in every single week. You gotta be able to keep track of that. And you're still doing your signings and you're spending time with family and you're dealing with other things um, and ventures that you got going on. I'm working on websites. I'm trying to get those together. Um, trying to get website stuff together for a couple of my clients. So I'm up late and then if I don't do that accounting, that actually throws everything off balance completely because then I get all these checks. Now I got to spend two, three hours. I don't know why my nose is so itchy all of a sudden. Then I got to spend two, three hours actually um, reconciling everything and making sure stuff is straight. Um, then I got to make sure it's in notary assist so I can account for it. So don't quit your day job. Don't quit your day job if you don't have yourself together to where you can be organized and um, somewhat meticulous, um, somewhat anal retentive to make sure that stuff is done. You, if, you, if you're looking for somebody else to do it, you might not want to do this because no matter what fancy software you use, some human fingers got to put in the digits. You can't just say, okay, I got an order in and bam, it's all of a sudden in QuickBooks. And even if you said, well, I'm gonna have an accountant do it, the accountant still has to receive the information. You got to give the accountant something and therefore the accountant got to take that information and put it into the system. And it still requires a little magic fingers. So if you're looking at something to be completely automated to where you do nothing, you just sit back, chill. I mean, there might be something out there, but till then you're gonna to have to manually put your stuff in. Um, the timing, just keeping up with the, your, your time throughout the day. I mean, there's been a couple of times where I didn't even know what day of the week it was. Um, there was somebody I was supposed to call and I'm um, supposed to meet, and I can't even remember who it was now. I mean, you know, or even what day it was, but I remember somebody texted me and all of that. So that's why I tell y'all, if um, y'all reached out to me and then all of a sudden you don't hear from me, uh, please text me, you know, even now text me, the number is in the description, text me and say, hey, Griff, don't forget to call me, you know, um, or just call me, you know, and all of that. So if I'm busy, I'll let you know and I'll get back with you. Um, that's why I tell people, you know, if you when you email me, include your phone number so that way I can call because sometimes I don't have time to sit there and type up an email. It's easier for me to talk because I'm talking to people in between driving. Um, and to be honest, helping notaries out, helping y'all out is actually easier and less stressful than running the business, <laughs> you know? Um, and I know somebody probably saying, because he liked to run his mouth. Yeah. But I, I love doing, I love helping people. So, you know, I'm still getting my feet, you know, grounded with this. Okay. Um, just being able to stay coordinated and organized when orders come in. Um, like I shared in the other video, I'm mean, even here, I'm sharing like today, this Friday, the 19th, I was supposed to make $625. Um, I was all set for it. I was like, yeah, I'm going, I'm going to pull in some bank today. And all of a sudden, you know, I lost that. I lost $375 because at the time they wanted to do the signing, it was wet, rainy, and cold, 30 some degrees. And I was like, I am not sitting out there. And they told me on my way to them this morning, I'm on my way to them for 10.30, it's a 30 minute drive. 
I'm on my way to them and they're calling me and saying, hey, yeah, you might, we might want to reschedule because, you know, to a better day because it's pretty bad. And I'm like, it's no big deal. We're going to be inside. And they're like, no, we're going to be outside. I'm like, we mean outside. They're like, in this weather, they're like, well, we really don't want to, but we know we need to get these papers done. So yeah, we're going to have to be outside. I'm like, and nobody, and they wouldn't even tell me why. I had to like sort of pull it out. I said, okay, what's going on? Is something I need to know about? Well, you know, we just prefer to be outside. I'm like, that ain't telling me much. Very sweet couple. And I said, is this dealing with COVID-19 stuff? Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. And I was like, okay, okay. So, you, you know, I was like, hmm, okay, gotcha. Gotcha. No problem. We'll address it. We'll take care of it. We'll figure something out, so forth and so on. Um, we ended up, I, I ended up not doing it. I even suggested that I would give the document because I actually printed all three sets. It was three refinances, three for 125 a piece. So I was like, you know, problem. I'll take care of that, get it done. I've done that before. And basically, I didn't, I didn't do it. No print fee, no nothing. And I know people are going to be free. Oh, no print fee. Yeah, no print fee. Um, it's no big deal. No big deal at all. Because um, I got other orders from them that I'm doing. So I'm still making my money. And even though I lost those three, I picked up three. So I ended up picking up three orders for a total of $330 for tomorrow. So I hadn't planned on doing anything tomorrow. But because I lost those three today, I'm going to do three tomorrow. So I made two fifty dollars for today. Woo I'm happy and, um, and all of that. So I'm four below my norm. I'm, you know, four signings for the week. I got 14 under my belt for this week. I'm normally at about 18. No big deal. I'm cool with it. And just move on and keep making my money. That kind of stuff you got to be ready to deal with. I mean, you set, you're ready to go. And then all of a sudden the order is gone you know, whether it's by them or because of you. And there was just no way I was going to be able to sit out there in that weather for over an hour, possibly. With wind, rain sliding all over the place, they want to be in a gazebo. I was like, even if the gazebo was completely closed in and covered, there's still cold out there. And I don't do good in cold. <laughs> and I've learned that ever since I was born. Uh, me and cold don't do good. I'm, you know, unless I'm all wrapped and I can't you know, grip papers, right? And all that. And all people talking about using gloves, but I don't have them, whatever gloves they are. I don't have them. So I lost 375 today. They even offered to pay me 400 to go do it. And I was like, mm -mm, can't do it. Nope. Because I already knew, because I got a little bit sick early in the year because I was outside in the cold weather like this. The only difference was it wasn't as windy and it wasn't as wet and rainy, but it was very cold like it was today. If you're going to be full time, you got to be able to handle that kind of stuff. So you got to get your accounting right. As I've always told you, you got to get your schedule. You got to know what your schedule is. You got to get your schedule. You got to get your accounting. And you got to be able to deal with the influxes of orders coming, orders being gone, um, just cancellations, all of that. So. And then, you know, and then to top it all off today, I did. <laughs> and I know people might get upset with me. But I actually did an order today and didn't get paid on purpose. Yeah, I did an order today. And it was a simple order. All it was was just going and taking pictures of an ID. <laughs> that was it. Um, the lady was, um, a, non, was a non-resident. Um, she had a green card. Did the um, refinance. They asked me, um, did I have a, you know, um, her ID? And, I, you know, um, the green card, when do, do I remember taking pictures of that? I said, nah. They said, well, could you please go over there and, um, you know, and do that um, and take, you know, and do that for us? Would you mind? I said, no, no problem. And they said, how much you want to charge? You know, would you charge? And I said, you know, I already knew where it was at. It was five minutes from my house. I said, no charge. I said, I'll go over there and do it. And they said, make sure they front and back. Click, click. And emailed it to them like they asked me to. Because um, I think the portal thing was sort of shut down. It wasn't working right. Um, and I was like, okay. You know, and from time to time, they will ask you to email IDs. I, I know right now people are like, oh, 
I already got it. I know. But um and all of that. So yeah, I know. <laughs> because there was something about funding and they had to hurry up and get it and everything. And I think through the something with the portal it was it was messing up because I had sent them something through the portal, another thing they asked and it was and it was messing up. Um so that was the quickest way they could get it so they can do the funding and all of that stuff. So then I delete the email and all that. Um so I didn't get paid for that today. So um, hopefully that won't, you know, disrupt too much notary stuff and all of that. The bottom line is this. If you're going to be full time, you got to take this thing serious. And just because you hit 15 signings in a month, a couple of times, even a certain dollar amount, a couple of times, if you don't have your accounting right, if you don't have <clears throat> you're not disciplined and then more importantly to me stamina if you don't have the stamina to be on the go <clears throat> i mean like right now i'm chilling i mean i'm like i'm taking this this break i don't i mean unless a order unless an order coming in around the corner for like 150 200 i ain't touching it I'm serious. I am not touching it. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to throw some serious dollars because right now I'm just chilling, getting ready. I got to do my other um, signings tomorrow. I've got an eight. I mean a ten, a one, and an eight p.m. eight thirty p.m. Um, nah. But you got to have some stamina because when I did those eighty one in January, like I think I said in another video, it took me a month and a half to recoup from that. I was hurting. I mean physically, I was just like done then on top of that sitting out in the cold for an hour <clears throat> not even knowing i was going to be doing that and got a little sick from that no so i'm not it's this is doable but you can't come in here and try to just jump out here and do it without a plan because and especially and this is to the men okay as a man do not just jump out here and do this without a plan, without something solid so that your your wife can have that sense of security or girlfriend or partner so that they can have that sense of security that they can know that we're going to be OK. You got to get out here, which means if you're going to be full time, you can't be sitting on the couch watching orders pass you by because somebody on Facebook says so told you to do so you got to get out here and hustle you got to get out here and work this thing so if you're going to be full-time and that's why i say i agree with victor chambers you can't just jump out here and do this just because you had a, a spark of success you know if somebody's hooking you up with stuff you know hooking you up with orders and, and connections and all of that there's nothing wrong with that but if you can't establish something on your own and you got to depend solely on them to feed you your success, then you're going to have a hard time if all of a sudden there's a rift between y'all and y'all not partners no more, or, or they decide to go in a different direction and you don't want to go down that road, or they just move on or something, you know, and they're like, okay, you got it. Now I hook, I helped you out. I hooked you up. Now you got to feed, you know, feed yourself and you can't do that. That's the real test as a man. Can you do this without somebody hand holding you and 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 feeding you success by, by by making phone calls for you or telling you where to go and all that and you just follow their direction and do it and you make money but it wasn't in you to do you didn't make any of this happen on your own and you have to if you can't make any of this happen on your own then i don't know how you plan on making it because if that person all of a sudden passes or just moves on or get out of the industry or whatever the case may be or get too big time to where they don't have time to to associate with you you got to be able to do this on your own it's that simple you know um and yes the, the the same advice applies to you ladies but more specifically the men especially the men who have that responsibility of taking care of a family or children you know if they're not married and they still you know they got kids that they're taking care of you got to have your act together so I applaud Victor because he's been out there longer than me. So, you know, I'm learning and watching what he's doing. Um, because this is my first time just completely not working, whereas I didn't get fired or late for. Have I ever got fired? Have I ever got fired? 
No, nah, I said fired. No, one time. I'm sorry. I did. One time I got fired. <laughs> but other than that, I quit or they got laid off. So um, I'm learning. You know, I'm only in this couple of months as a full time entrepreneur. So I got a lot to learn and a long way to go. And I'm constantly tweaking my systems, constantly tweaking, tweaking, not twinkie, <laughs> tweaking um, how I do things so that I can be good at it, you know. And even also, last night, I had to put in a new printer. The printer that I had um, was finally like, I'm done. So it has probably a little bit of life in it. But what I didn't want to happen was while I'm in the middle of printing, it finally just goes all together. So I did that um, last night that, you know, didn't take that long, but it was still the time to do it, maybe 15, 20 minutes um, to do it, test it out, make sure it's printing right, then print all those documents that I had to print those. I had five signers a day, um, three appointments, but five, I had to print all of that. So all I'm saying is, if you plan on just jumping out here, just because you had a little bit of popcorn success, um, you really, no, nah, don't do that. Don't do that. Hold, hold tight. Make sure you got your stuff together. And then you'll be able to do it. Because my goal when I left, when I quit my job before, I had actually planned in 2019. And I didn't start thinking about leaving until I, when I hit 20, the last August, September, October, November, and December. I think the last five months, I did... Um, over 20, under 20, over, over, over. So I did like four out of the five months. I think I was um, over $20. I mean, 20 signings um, each month um, for 2019. So when I saw that, I said, okay, if I'm doing this, I might be able to go full time. So I started planning to, um, to go full time Yep, that's exactly what I thought. Yeah, 26, 17, 20, 20, 26. So once I hit that and I got got in the 20s, I didn't look back. I was going. And I said, okay, if I can get to 35, 40, then I believe, you know, I believe I can go ahead on and go full time. And I started making a plan. Now, the biggest plan that I had to make was the money. How much money was I going to have available because the checks that come from these companies don't come instantaneously. Now, of course, people say, well, that's why you go direct, go direct, Griffin. You won't have to worry about that. Not necessarily um, because you got to have enough direct client business to sustain you. And if you still don't have enough direct client business versus signing company business, where you at? So you get 15, 20 direct clients. And if that money that you're making from them is enough, okay, cool. And as long as they are able to pay you, they got to have some deep pockets to be able to just pay you every week. And if they don't, then you got to, you know, you got to fend for yourself until you get them checks. So direct isn't necessarily guaranteed. Plus, especially if you got an invoice and you busy, you got to take time out to hit, hit that button and invoice them. Then you got to take time out to deposit those checks. So going direct isn't an automatic, okay, period. You know, although people argue with me over that. But once I saw that and I said, okay, now if I can push it to 30, 35, then I said, if I really hit 40, if I can get 40 in a month, <laughs> I'm on it. I said, I'm, I'm golden. I said, I know because I know. And then once I hit two years, I started seeing additional companies present themselves to me and giving me offers. So I was making a plan, but I said, in order for me to walk away, I need $20,000 available. So I made a plan to have $20,000 available, whether it was cash in the bank, credit cards, line of credit. I just needed to have $20,000 worth of money available. And I was going to leave in July of 20, July 30th, 2020. Pandemic happened in March. That's when for us, it hit really hit March. That's, <clears throat> that's when they sent us home. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna hang in here a little longer. 
and then the things then the things just started popping next thing you know i'm i'm hitting 50 you know signings in a month and i'm like okay i can really believe i really believe i can do that i said so let me milk this sucker let me stay with this job for as long as i can and i'm gonna leave at the end of the year that's it i said i'm gonna leave at the end of the year i'm gonna hang in here till the end of the year that lasted three and a half months and I was like, you know, it was um, July, then it was August, September, October, then left on November the 13th. I was like, nah, because they, conf too, just too much conflict. Did I have my 20K? Nah. I think total between all of that, the line of credit, money in the bank, um, some credit cards, I probably had maybe eight grand, something like that available. And I said, I'm gonna just have to take a chance. So what I did was, and I had a feeling that I was going to be leaving, I went head on and I really worked my butt off. I'm talking about, I was I was only getting four hours of sleep a night for like four months straight. Hold on one second. Hey, Griffin Notary. Yes. Um, Give me a few more minutes and I'll be, and I'm gonna call you right back. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. All right. That's somebody just need to ask me some questions about something else. Um, yeah. So I was like, for four months, um, probably so August, July. So yeah, probably May, June, July, August. So May, June, July. Back in May, that's when I really just kicked it in. And I was just working my full-time job, go do signings, come back, finish my full-time job, um, my, my reports and stuff that I had to do. Um, and I would be up till three in the morning, go to bed, get back up at six, six thirty, maybe even sometimes seven, and literally roll out to bed right on to work. And I'm talking about I was up doing scan backs, everything. I didn't care. I was just like, I'm 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 working this sucker. I said, I gotta get money. So even though I did not have 10 grand, I mean 20,000 saved up in the bank, what I did have, I think my last two months before I qu um quit. I had four thousand dollars that I made over four thousand, and then five thousand. So I said, okay, now I got up almost ten thousand dollars that I've made that's coming. Then I had the eight thousand dollars or so that I pretty much had available. I was like, okay, cool. So when I leave this job, I know I got that kind of money coming in, and then so for whatever bills, I should be okay might have to pay a, a, a bill or two a little late no big deal i've made sure the stuff was caught up as much as i could well i was not say caught up but more ahead you know caught up and paid ahead as much as i could so that when i left i would be able to just like okay cool so if something came up okay i'm gonna just have to let me get an extension on that let me get an extension on that okay i'm gonna pay you at by the 15th of the next month we good all right you know my so i was making sure everything was paid up and then that way when i walked away i could still get you know i can have my money and i wouldn't be getting cut off notices and stuff and the main thing i need to make sure my my, my electric internet and cell phone those three things i had to make sure that was that they was popping as long as i had those i was good because then i can do business i need electric I need my internet and I need my cell phone. <clears throat> and as long as I have those, I'm good. And then of course the vehicle. So, <clears throat> so once I got all of that straight, that's why I was, I felt more comfortable leaving. And it was not, and with me leaving in the middle part of the month, it worked because I was getting checks coming in. So money was coming in, plus the money that I had stashed off to the side and available I didn't miss a beat with the stuff that we needed to do in the house. So again, planning, not just assuming that everything was just going to work. I, I had all kinds of contingency plans. That's why I had made sure I was Ron, um, the remote online notary. So a push came to shove. If things got slow, I would hop on and do notarize. Um, I haven't done it yet, but I, I was available. I had that together. That's why I got my dot verify account. I had all of this stuff set up. So I can do these different things. Then I had the house inspection. So if push came to shove, I'd do more house inspection. So I had all of this stuff set up. 
that's why I always push y'all to try to get all these multiple streams of income. And I know YouTube can be one, but sometimes, you know, you just can't rely on YouTube, especially if they're taking 40 percent up to 40 percent in some cases of your of what you they supposed to be giving you. You make a dollar and they taking 40 eh, percent. You know what I'm saying? So that's the kind of stuff that I did, y'all. Um, and it's doable. It's very, very doable. But you got a plan and you can't be be shucking and jiving and you and your family got to be on point on one accord and you can do this thing. OK, but. As you see, it's working so far, and then I'm just tweaking. Each month, I'm learning more and more. Each month, I'm getting better and better. So by next month, so come April, I I don't expect to have this issue of my schedule. You know, my um my schedule being so in flux. Um, I haven't had a whole lot of back to back signings. I've been better at that, and the county is going to be on point. So come April. I'm not going to have this issue of not knowing whether I got paid, can't remember, all of that kind of stuff. I'm putting stuff in place to keep track of all of that, you know. And the next thing is to make sure that I have a system in place that can solidly, that I can find, make sure that I know that I actually confirm these appointments. Because some of the systems out here don't allow, don't actually show you that. Signing order does, but other ones don't. So like for my notary assist, or notary gadget, I wish there was a, a feature that I can say, okay, click something and it lets me see when I see that order, I know I confirmed it and it let me know that I have my docs. So when docs come, okay, I can hit something that says, okay, docs have been arrived and I've confirmed that. That's what I need. And we all need that. So that when you look at it, you're not going back and recalling <clears throat> people to verify that you called them because there's nothing I can tell you that Sometimes, especially on orders that you put into snap docs and all of that kind of stuff, or if you put all your orders in the notary assist, there's nothing in there that says you called this person and confirmed. You have the contact information, but I don't recall seeing anything in there um, that lets me know that I've actually confirmed with anybody. And I'm looking at it now and there's nothing. I mean, you have the notes, but I don't want to have to click on the thing and then go to notes. I want to see something that says confirm docs. And if I see that, you know, somebody can put that together for me, I'll pay for that. That 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 is what I need. That right there is what I need. And we all need that, you know. So I'm looking at my notary assist right now and it doesn't and there's nothing in that tells me these appointments have been confirmed or you have docs for these things. Nothing. And that's the next thing that I need done. All right? Well, y'all take it easy. I'm going to drop these checks into the bank, um, eat, you know, do my mobile deposit, call my lady back on um, that called and make sure she's straight. All right. Y'all have a good one. Peace.